I square C is an acronym for interintegrated circuit. It can also be referred to as an IIC or I2C. I squared C was created by Philips now NXP in the year 1982. As a simple serial bus, I squared C provides robust serial communication between a peripheral device and a microcontroller. I squared C is the most common and widely used serial bus across most applications, including IoT, consumer electronics, industrial equipment, automotive, and aerospace. I squared C is a synchronous protocol that allows a master to initiate communication with a slave device. I square C is a bidirectional bus meaning the master can both write to the slave and read from the slave, and it is a serial bus as well, and has two bus lines serial clock SCL and serial data SDA. Here is the I squared C bus configuration. Single master configuration. In this single master initiates, a read and write transaction the slave. There is no concept of bus arbitration here, as there is only a single master who has control of the bus. Multi-master configuration. In this, there are two masters who can write into any of the slaves. There is no concern as long as one master one completes the transaction, and the second master that is master two later starts the next transaction. However, when both the masters that is master 1 and master 2 try to initiate the transaction at the same time then we run into the problem called bus arbitration. I2C has two lines SCL and SDA. So the arbitration can happen on SCL or SDA lines. Before we get into the details of bus arbitration, let's get some basics of the bus. Wired and bus configuration. The SDA and SCL line are at logic high by default, and it is pulled high by the pull-up resistor, which is connected to the power supply VDT. And there's a good reason for that. When every input is 1, the output is 1. Let's look at the truth table. It is at logic 0 when either of the masters pulls at low. This means that if either of the input goes 0, then the output is 0. The line is high only when both the lines are high. The same truth table applies to SDA lines as well. Let us now look at SCL arbitration or clock synchronization. Master responsibility. 1. Each master device must monitor the SCL line and react to cases where the SCL does not match its expected SCL output. 2. Similarly after the start of the serial clock pulse all the masters pull down on SCL to complete the serial clock pulse. Let's now look at the timing diagram of SCL lines. During a start condition where two masters are trying to claim the bus, there is a high to low transition on SCL. Here is an example where two master devices are trying to claim the bus at or near the same time. Here, master 1 device initiates a start condition shortly before master 2. Master 1 pulls SCL down before master 2. With the wired end connection, SCL pulls low as soon as master 1 pulls down on SCL. After the start condition, master 1 releases SCL to go high. However, master 2 is still holding SCL low. Because of the wired end connection, SCL remains low until master 2 releases the SCL high. At the same time, master 1 is still monitoring SCL and must wait for the other master to release the clock. Master 1 cannot advance the SCL pulse until the SCL is available when Master 2 has released it. When multiple masters are competing for the bus, SCL stays low for as long as the longest period of time that any master pulls down SCL. Only after all the masters have released the SCL can the line be released high for the serial clock pulse. This synchronizes the start of the serial clock for all masters. Similarly, after the start of the serial clock pulse, all the masters pull down on SCL to complete the serial clock pulse. Let's now look at SDA arbitration. Now that the serial clock line is synchronized, arbitration is done on the SDA line. Both masters transmit data normally on SDA, sending their communication to the intended slave. Similar to SCL, SDA is a wired end connection. Both masters also monitor SDA for the resulting communication. The first master to transmit a low bit while the other master transmits a high bit wins arbitration. With the wired-in connection, the masters that win arbitration
do not have their communication disrupted. The master device that loses arbitration stops its transmission, and the master device that wins arbitration continues its communication uninterrupted. In this method of arbitration, both masters are transmitting data at the same time. The master that matches the wired AND result for SDA is the master that wins arbitration. The master that is disrupted by the wired AND result for SDA stops transmission and releases the I2C bus. Let's see an example for I2C bus arbitration timing diagram. In this example, the two master 1 and master 2 have taken the control of the bus line have the same speed, and both of them are in the right mode and want to address the same slave. The masters transmit the same address at the same time on the bus. Then the masters transmit the right mode. The slave acknowledges it and so far both the master are under the impression that it owns the bus because so far they have transmitted the same data on the bus. Now each master wants to transmit his own data to the slave. The moment their data bits do not match anymore, then master 2 loses arbitration and master 2 backs off because when master 2 tries to pull the SDA line high, the data on the bus remains low due to wired end configuration. Thus master 2 does not get its data on the bus as long as there has been no stop sequence present on the bus.